All right, guys, so here is a GTX 640 from about 10 years ago. Here's a 3090, and here is the big boy 4090. So workbench and... Uh... Hey, guys, so uh, basically this is a 3090. It's been here for a while. Now, what I've done here is I've actually added a couple of little enhancements here. I've got a 8-centimeter fan, a little stopper here just so that this beast doesn't move. And what this is, this is actually a heat sink from a Pentium Pro CPU. And it's pretty much stuck onto the top of the video card with double-sided uh, thermal pads because there is no fan on the back there. There's a fan down here and there's a fan up here on the 3090. But up here, you've got a whole bunch of memory right underneath it. So by putting this heat sink here and by adding a fan on top of it, I've been able to drop the temperature of the VRMs by about 20 degrees. Uh, this is a Foxconn 17615 heat sink from a Pentium Pro CPU. You can get those on Amazon or eBay, or you can just get your own set of heat sinks and just glue them on top here with thermal pads. Let's pause this and I'll see if I can take it off. It's gotten it's pretty stuck in here. Takes a little bit of a push here, kind of slides out from the back. And then if we flip it around, here's my thermal pad assembly on the back of it. Quite a bit of it here. And here's the spot where it was. So this was actually on top of the video card. And there is the 3090. So just an idea for folks who may be considering heat issues. It does improve the life of the 3090 quite a bit. Cheers. So in the case, I've got the 3090. Right at the top here it's a beautiful video card i've got additional slots down here here's my power supply that i'm going to be extracting it's not an atx v3 power supply um, here's the power from the 3090 and i'm using a piece of styrofoam as a kind of a panel to make sure that the card doesn't sag not it doesn't that it sags but you can cut yourself a piece of styrofoam just kind of wedge it in there and that just helps it from sagging now, first things first, I'm going to disconnect all the powers, of course, off. The case is already out. I'm going to unplug this cable here. I'm going to push on the little peep bit there. And so that's the power cable. And it splits off into these four leads. So that's extracted. Next up, I need to get, grab a screwdriver and unscrew the video card out. All right, so I forgot to turn on the record. There you go, that's why I don't make videos about video cards and computers. So I had to take out three screws here to take out the video card, which is right there. So that's the 3090. This is where my thermal heat sink was. Um, and this thing here, this is the retention clip. So I had to, with my screwdriver from the side, push it on it and then lift from the front. So once it was released, I would reach down here, push in, and lift up the video card this way in order to extract it. And for those who are wondering, here's that DIY heatsink, Foxconn 17615 from a Pentium Pro. And uh, that's where it was. That's all the pads. And if you look at it, it's almost like it's designed to be on this video card. It's got just enough clearance and it just connects perfectly. I mean, look at that guys. It's right there. You do need to wiggle it a little bit to make sure it's properly on, make sure you got the proper thermal pads. But just enough clearance, and it's a big honking chunk of copper. So I totally recommend if you got a 3090, do this because it'll make your life so much better. All right, guys, one more important thing here about your computer. So I've got the video card out, and what I need to do is I actually am going to use this opportunity to, well, first off, there's no dust, which is a good thing. But I'm going to remove the clips from my fan right here on both sides. This is a knock to a heat sink and fan solution, which are the best in the market. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take off the entire heat sink by removing a couple, a couple of screws. Now the reason I need to do this is because I want to re-goop my CPU. The CPU has a heat sink on top of it. And because no piece of metal is perfectly smooth, to improve the heat transfer, there's thermal paste that's applied. 
So this should be replaced every should be replaced every year or two because otherwise it'll dry out and stop conducting heat as well. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to remove the screws and uh, go from there. All right, guys. So I've released these two screws. You got to unscrew them slowly. That's for Noctua a heat sink. You might have different screws, but never unscrew just one screw. Unscrew them in equal force from both sides. That one's not fully out. There we go. Oh, come on. So it's released. So here is the back of the back of the heatsink, and here's our CPU. And as you can see, it's uh, it's not bad, but uh, I'm gonna apply some more goop on there and uh, make sure it's good. Now to remove the old goop from the heatsink and from the CPU, I'm gonna use some rubbing alcohol. I'm just gonna wipe it down and then I'm gonna reapply. So let's do that. All right, guys, so back into our heatsink. So I've got some of my sterilization pads. As long as I don't have any microfibers or anything that's not gonna dry up nicely like alcohol, wipe it completely down, make sure it's nice and shiny. There you go, that's kind of what we're looking for. It should be nice and smooth, make sure there's no dust or particles on there. And then same thing, clean up your CPU. Again, I strongly recommend using um, rubbing alcohol because it doesn't have any liquids. Make sure that there's no drops. And uh, as you can see, there's actually quite a bit of goop here and there's almost no thermal paste here. But we should remove the old stuff. Why? Because it's kind of, as you can see right there, it's actually started drying up and caking up already. When it fully dries up, it looks like a, it actually looks solid. It becomes solid when it fully dries out. And if you haven't done this to your CPU for two years, it, you might have like a solid core crust of goop there. And uh, that can cause problems because you won't heat transfer properly. So there we go. That's what we should be looking at, guys. Nice and clean CPU, nice and clean heat sink. Let me clean it up a little more. Just give it a nice, nice, nicer wipe down. All right, that's more like it. That's pretty good. I'm okay with that. Pretty shiny and nice and shiny as well. All right, I'm gonna apply some goop now. All right guys, so this is an example of a thermal paste dispenser. Ooh, my nails look terrible. Um, it usually comes in a little syringe like this. And the whole point is, hold on, focus, focus. There it is. And you basically kind of squirt it out like a syringe onto the CPU. You can do different patterns. You can do X's. You can do all kinds of things. I prefer to actually do a double take. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I use Arctic Silver. I've used it for years. It's great. It's fairly inexpensive and it's excellent quality thermal paste. You don't want liquid silver, you want arctic silver. Liquid silver is actually able to transmit uh, electricity, whereas this thing is non-conductive. So if a drop of this stuff ends up on your circuits, you probably won't blow up your computer. But if you get the liquid silver stuff, which is way more expensive, a drop of that can actually conduct electricity. All right, so we've got a little cross hatch there. And now what I always do is I'm actually going to take my heat sink, I'm going to plop it down and I'm going to wiggle it to spread everything around a bit. And I'm going to see what the, what the dissipation is. So it's down, the two screws are on. Sorry about that, guys, it's a pain in the butt. So yeah, it's down, two screws are on, and I'm just kind of giving it a wiggle. Very hectic here. The whole goal is to see how the goo is going to dissipate underneath. Okay, so that's done. Lift it back up. So now as you can see, the goo has been dissipating. So there's a bit of goo there and a bit of goo there. And as for those who are wondering, I had to uh, do this on my bed because uh, I don't have a big computer desk. So I do have a nice plate here that I put down on the bed, but yeah. So here's the heat dissipate, here's the goo dissipation. As you can see, it's not bad, but now I know that I can add a little bit more goop on the sides here. And you do want to spread it around just like I did there. You can use a little um, trowel or whatever else that, that you can, but the reason I do it this way 
is because I want to know how it's going to get onto my fan and the heatsink assembly. All right. So I applied some more goop. Let's reverse it for just a second. Put it back down. Give it a wiggle on the other side. That looks good right there. Nice coverage. Nice coverage. That's what we need. All right. Feeling pretty confident here. Heat sinks installed. And I'm just going to tighten up each of the two sides. So I'm going to start on the side here first. Start tightening it up. Again, your heat sink may be differently mounted. Um, if you are upgrading, I recommend the Nocto products very, very much. They're just awesome. So I'm just working the two sides here. So I'm going to work this side. A few, few turns, this side few turns and the reason I'm doing this is that so that there's even distribution of weight a few more turns on this side go back to this side a few more turns on this side again back and forth you don't want to be screwing especially when you're applying when you're putting up the actual heat sink assembly holder you want to slowly distribute your pressure you don't want to over pressure it all right, so that's connected. And now I can just clip in my fan itself. So we're good to go. All right, I kind of skipped the step here, but the video uh, power supply basically gets screwed into the back with the four screws. This is at the bottom or at the top of the case, kind of in there. I've already pulled it out, so I can't shove it back in. But basically, kind of lives it's either on top or the bottom of the case right if you have a 4090 and your power supply is an old school power supply without the 12 vh power capability as in it has those pigtails this is the adapter for the 3090 oh where it is so yeah here's the adapter for the 3090 on the 3090, as Jay's 2 cents pointed out, plugs it on the side, just like that. And then that goes to your power supply. If you spent the money on a 4090, go buy yourself a power supply with 12 VH power. Why? Because it's a direct power lead. That's what I did. I went and got this MSI uh, MPG 1000G because it has direct power leads, so I don't need to mess around with the cables. There's been controversies about these cables breaking, and this does look pretty sloppy. In my case, if I were to install this card, it's not going to be able to basically connect properly. So you can see, guys, this is going to bend really hard in my case. So I want a direct cable that is a guaranteed cable right from the power supply all the way to the video card without any adapters. So if you bought a 4090, don't screw around with the adapters. Go buy yourself a new power supply, okay? If your video card is that expensive and you paid that much for it, go get a proper cable for it. All right, on that note, Plasma 1945 out. All right, guys, so there is a GT640. There's a 3090. Here's the big boy 4090. Here's a little workbench. Old power supply has been extracted and removed. Some cables still lying around. And of course, we vacuum the case, make sure the case was nice and clean, make sure there was no dust, replace the thermal grease on the fan, and we've got the MPG 1000 from MSI with the 12 volt power connector. So let's uh, see what we can do here. This is the Gigabyte OC, the tiny little switch right there, guys. And one's like the overclock positions, one's not. So to the left, it's overclock. To the right, it's silent. So I guess we're in overclock mode. Oh my God, I'm gonna peel this thing off. Some people get off on this. I really don't care about unboxing a 4090. Especially again, thankful to the anonymous top secret subscriber who doesn't want me to get punishment from YouTube for promoting the video cards or whatever. So anyway, there it is. There's the size of it. 
So here's the three slots the old card was in. And yeah, I'm doing this on the bed. I pulled the mattress back and everything else. Just so I got room for it. Benefits of living in an apartment. So I guess I just have to drop it in. And I'm going to put this down because... Alright guys, so there you have it. 4090 in the case. The 12 VH power is right here. I don't think I'll still be able to close the case there. But uh, here's my custom anti-sag solution. A couple styrofoam blocks just kind of backing each other up there. Without them, it definitely does sag downwards. Otherwise, looking pretty good. And we're going to power it up and see what happens.